I am Daniel Lucas, and welcome to Book 101. Book 101 is all about the books that I read for the last 40 years, and today I have my special guest. She is the author of two books, and of course, this coming poetry book, this coming April. Please do give a big, big hand to Miss Stephanie Rowe. Yes, it's nice to see you in a video podcast. <laughs> it is. Last time we talked, we are doing only audio and you are in Peru. So how's your adventure? Yeah, our adventure was amazing. We um we had such a wonderful time. We went to uh, Machu Picchu, which was just mind-blowingly incredible. And we went to Sacred Valley and it was just, yeah, every it, Peru is an incredible country. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we ended our trip in November last year uh, because <laughs> our car got driven off of, uh, our tour bus car got driven off of the cliff in the Amazon. And so we, we we had to come home. So, But we're all good. We're alive and we're healthy. It was a very, very big <laughs> adventure, um, <laughs> which I will be writing about in my next book. <laughs> oh, yes. Looking forward to that, Miss Staff. So. Before we go on, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I'd love to. So I'm uh, Stephanie Rowe, who is also known as Mrs. Rowe. I'm from Australia and I currently live in Tasmania, Hobart, but I was born in Brisbane, Queensland, which is north of uh, the country. Um, I am a self-published author of Fiercely Me, which is my book, which is was released in February this year and is selling very well and I'm very happy. And all the reviews that have been coming in have been absolutely touching. Like my heart is just so overwhelmingly um, appreciative that everybody is seeing the story that I've written. Um, and I'm also the uh, instigator and um, coordinator and and head collaborator of a poetry book called The World and Our Words, and that um, includes 24 poets, which we're going to get into later in this. But, yeah, so I also write poetry as well, which is absolutely one of my favourite things to do. So, Congratulations <laughs> for the success <laughs> of your book. <laughs> Let's celebrate champagne. I know. Oh, honey, I so... cannot wait for the champagne. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Misha Staff, let's do the recap. Yeah. How did you craft it? Fiercely Me. Yeah, Fiercely Me. So, Fiercely Me um, was written um, because I have always had a goal. So, I've always had a goal to write my memoir and my autobiography. And so, I'd always written over my lifespan. Um, like it's just something that I've always done. It was something that I connected to was the written word. And so even though I left high school and wasn't able to spell and my um, ability to actually um, educate myself, well, when I left high school, I wasn't educated and I had to then go and educate myself and learn how to how to spell and write and learn grammar and punctuation, which was something that, um, you know, I didn't learn at high school. So the fact that I now have a published book um, and have, you know, learnt and so forth is a huge thing. But, um, that, and, and it's also be, like, I'm so proud of this, you know, like from a person that left high school that wasn't able to spell to being a self published author of, um, her own memoir. Like, that's a, that's, that's huge. So, um, and yeah, so I'd always had a fascination with words and how you can, just, you know, describe the world that you see through words. So I'd always written. And I had a lot of writing when I had start when I'd made the commitment to myself that I wanted to complete my goal, my lifetime goal. Um, but then I, I realized like I'd, I'd kind of brought things in and I'd brought, taken it back out again. I re- I wrote um, from my perspective now, you know. And so honestly, the, the process of writing fiercely me has been a huge one because there is like not only was I trying to bring everything in I realized that I had to be really critical and I had to go this is not what's needed in the story right now so then I had to take it back out because you know everybody's life is huge we all have a really huge 
experience of life. And so we can't necessarily put all of it into a book. And so I really had to be critical on what I wanted to put in there. And so once I got to that place and I was like, okay, so I'm taking this out, I'm putting this back in, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on these areas and write um, these parts of my life, I did that. And so that kind of finished up in maybe February, April last, no, not April, March last year, so 12 months ago now. And um, I had an editor and she fell through and then I got really sad and depressed because I was like, I've done this book and now I don't have an editor. <laughs> um, and essentially what I realised was that I wasn't actually supposed, that wasn't the book that was supposed to be finished. And so I spent another solid, and I mean solid, three months. So from the start, I started it in like August of 2021. I finished it in um, uh, February, March of 2022. And then I, you know, well, God, no, what are we in 2024? So no, 2023. So I, I finished it 12 months ago in 2023 in March. And then I had to spend another three months of last year in the middle of the year. Um, working out and re revisiting the writing because that wasn't it wasn't very good and so I was I had to be critical and, and people that had been reading it was like no you can do better than this Stephanie and I was like yeah I can do better than this <laughs> and yes so I, you are you did I, I was like <laughs> I have to do better because I, w I wouldn't have been happy with what I'd written the first draft down so even though there was a lot of to and fro in internally and in writing the first draft, it was like it wasn't ready. And it was, and so I, I had to be really brutally honest with myself. I had to go, you know what? You, it's it's time now to to do to to dig deeper and to be really honest because I'd also had an element where um I hadn't been on I hadn't written authentically and transparently for me. I had to honestly go, Steph, this isn't your true story. This isn't what's happened to you you need to be you need to be you need to look inside to your little girl and your teenage girl and your 20 year old girl and you need to you need to validate their experience and you need to validate and have enough respect for yourself to be able to go this is my story and this is actually um the story that happened to me through through my experience through my eyes through my body and I had to be really strong with myself and understand that I would have fallout that people wouldn't you know, certain people in the family wouldn't like it um, and that was that would be on them and not on me. And so I wrote it in that fashion. I had to rewrite the book and I rewrote it in the most authentic, transparent way for me. And um, and that kind of came out to, you know, probably August last year and then the editing um, started. Very well said, Mrs. Staff. So what are your struggles in writing Fierce Lemmy? Um, so the struggles that I had with writing Fiercely Me, there was many. <laughs> so many. <laughs> was, a lot. <laughs> oh my god. I, I think like writing a and self publishing a um a book is a very, very difficult thing. And I don't think that anyone that hasn't self published would understand until you go through it. Like there's not like everyone's like, Oh, you know, like it's really difficult, blah 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 and you're like, oh, that's okay, I'm determined and I can do it, which is exactly what I did, right? I, I was determined and I did it. But um, I was also not, I just had no idea. So first off, editing. Um, the editing process is really, really hard. It's it's so difficult to find a really good editor. A lot of editors say that they are really amazing and that they can do all of this stuff and then you pay money and a down payment and then you realise that they don't or they don't prioritize the book or you know they just don't have the skill sets um and it's and it's disappointing honestly it's really disappointing because you waste a lot of time um trying to find a, an editor to edit a book that you've poured your heart into um and they just and because it's not theirs right because it's not their um book they you know it's they're an editor that's their job they don't have as much emotional connection to it so <laughs> So it's 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 hard. That's hard. It's it's really hard. So I went. I it took me about four or five rounds before I found an editor. Um, and I, you know, and I had to just keep going. And, I, and it was one of the hardest things just to do that. But I found an amazing editor in the end. But you know, I, I think as a as a writer, it does. And I don't think it matters what genre it is. 
as a writer, you have to be really, really firm on what you want the outcome to be. So what kind of book do you want at the end? Because when you go into the editing process, you need to have that at the forefront of your of your mind. So that was really difficult um, to, you know, that process. And it was really, it's very time encompassing. So it's like having to go through and edit an entire book, you know, because it ended up being, eight, I think, nearly 90,000 words when, I, when I'd actually um, finished it. And to go through and edit that big book is is quite a yeah it's quite it takes a lot long a lot longer than I thought it would um and then there is the like the whole printing you know um the typesetting you know other people having opinions on how you how they want your book to look and again you know you when when you have that kind of vision of what you want your book to look like at the end all of these kind of steps you need to be really really sure of you need as a, as an author Unfortunately, you need to know what you want your book to look like, how you want people to open it, how you want people to feel it. And I'll show you a, a, a great example of what I'm talking about. So see this here? This is um, the yes. chapter headings, right? And there's a picture on yes. every chapter heading. But I wanted the wording yes. to go over the picture. Now, that apparently is not something that happens in the publishing industry. And for me, to get the to get these pictures <laughs> right was such yeah. a huge thing like i was just like you know it took me a lot to get this over the line because it's not something that people do in the publishing industry so i was like i had to you know have multiple meetings i had to problem solve i had to get into the technical element of it because they're like this can't be done and i'm like how can this not be done like surely there's a way to do this like it's not that this is new in the sense of um there's there's been pictures in books for a long time it's just that where i'm positioning the book um the pictures in the book is, is different to normal so so you know all of these things that i had to go through that i didn't have any idea that i would um that would be an issue was you know problems that came up through the process and so because I had that vision of the book I was always able to go back to what I wanted and so um and that's really important right it was really really important so then there was then once I got through the typesetting and, and because there's a difference between the paperback and the ebook um I had to kind of go through different processes so the ebook we haven't been able to get the the photo on the on the chapter headings because it won't connect to the contents page because for some reason technology hasn't got to that point where you can um, click on the, um, the contents and then it'll take you to that chapter. So, so yeah, so there's all of these things and then you get to the printing stage and then you go, this is going to be easy. All that needs to happen, right, is you just need to print the book and then you just need to send the book and, like, this has to be the easiest part and it wasn't. <laughs> and, so, and so I bought three lots of books oh, because... Yeah. The first book that I, the first lot of books that I bought were in China and I did like a test and I looked at the books and I picked the best quality, la, 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 la. And then they just said, oh, the, the, it's not on the ship and it's not turning up and whatever, you know, like they just washed their hands of it because they didn't really, they, again, they, it wasn't their book and they didn't really care if I had books for my launch or not. And so then I um, printed it through Ingram Spark. And again, Ingram Spark don't really communicate that well. So they're like, they'll take your money and they'll take the order, but they don't really tell you what's happening. Like, when is it printed? When are you going to, when is it going to be delivered? It's all very vague and there's no kind of information. So because of that, what I had to actually do was find a local um, print publisher, printer um, up in Queensland in Brisbane called um, Mackay Printing, who were wonderful and the best, honestly, the best quality print out of all three of them was the easiest to deal with and they and they were honestly like just the quickest turnaround and because they were local I was able to go pick them up so I have three different printing because I was um very very concerned that they weren't turn going to turn up in time and they didn't and so the last print run of from the Mackay printing in Brisbane was the one that I I went to my launch with and, and because they they were the quickest turnaround and they were the best quality and they were able to do like everything that I needed. So so that's just a few things that happened that were really difficult to go through within the within the printing process. Yes, people less support Ms. 
Stephanie Rowe, Fiercely Me, the memoir is out, and please do support her. But before we go on, uh, Miss Steph, can you unshare the screen? I want to share something. Yes, Can of you course. remove our, uh, sh- yeah, please. I want to share something about my latest ranking uh on the apple chart so before we go on mrs step i want to shout out to the people listening according to my ranking tops in the last 30 days because in bhutan i got number eight on the apple chart united arab emirates taiwan at 42 jamaica at 56 um cameroon at 76 uh, Thailand at 97, Cambodia 140, Zambia 147, and a lot more. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast. Because this podcast is created to empower writers all over the world like Miss Stephanie Rowe. And today, Mrs. Steph, let's talk about the worlds in our words. Yes. How did you craft it? And I would just like to say thank you so much, Daniel, for having me on again. And thank you to all of the listeners, because I know that this is something that's so important for authors um, and curators within the publishing world to have access to. And if you didn't do this, we wouldn't have a platform. Um, and we, and if you didn't have listeners, then we wouldn't have anybody listening to what projects we're doing. So it is extremely important to um, what you're doing, but also that listeners um, engage. because. You know, like we we wouldn't have the reach that you have. It's such a global reach, which is so cool within itself. So, thank you so much for having me on, and thank you to all the listeners. It's really, from the bottom of my heart. I'm so glad that I get to touch so many countries in the world. Yes, people, let's support me, Stephanie, for this coming poetry book. Yes. So, Miss Steph, what inspired you to write poetry? Yeah, so again, I've always written um, in my life and I've always written poetry and it's something that really, really touches my heart. Like I think poetry is one of those things where you can, as a poet, you can draw another human being into your internal um, dialogue and you can kind of almost create them visually seeing your world through your eyes, through words, and I love that. So I had this great idea because, I, you know, obviously I was going through the process with Fiercely Me, but I was really wanting to um, get and publish my own poetry and I had this crazy idea um, while I was a little bit tipsy and I was like, that's it, I'm going to publish my book. But I said, I don't have enough. So I, I, I reached out to my closest confidants, my closest friends and relatives, and I said, hey, guys, I know you, you guys are incredible writers. Do you want to contribute your poetry to um, – a collaboration poetry book that I'm going to put on um, because I think this would be a great opportunity for all of us to to publish our work. Um, and so they came back and they said, actually, you know, yeah, this sounds really cool. And then I thought, why not I, I give back because I'm a huge person on community and I'm a huge person on giving opportunities to others, right? So giving a platform to other people is, is a massive thing and I've done it all through my life. So <clears throat> I um, put on a multi-arts festival when I was um, – in 2010 so I could give artists platforms so it's something that is honestly really close to my heart so I put out a call um a call out on on Facebook uh and I said hey guy in in po- different poetry um groups and different writing groups and I said hey I'm going to do this collaboration poetry book did you want you know if you're interested um I'd love it if you came along um and, and contributed and so from that I had about probably 40 poets that contacted me and from that um I sent out contracts and then the the profits are going to be distributed across all of the poets. Um, And essentially um, from those 40 poets, 24 of them um, committed um, to to contributing to the poetry book, which is absolutely incredible. And so it's been a great turnout. So we, for me, there is a lot going on in the world and well, not just for me, for everybody, there's a lot going on in the world. People are dealing with increases in fuel, increases in, um, groceries increases in rent you know that you know the poverty line is definitely coming up you know and it's coming up closer to um, you know the middle class and so everybody's feeling this pressure we have wars going on we have invasions going on we have people dying and so for me as a human being I'm just like this is really horrible you know people are really really suffering out there and it's and it's not fair 
And, and, I, and, and so for me, I really wanted the driving force of this book to be how can I contribute to the world in a world which is, you know, completely, in, in, definitely in a destructive phase um, and, and people are really feeling that pressure. You know, how can I help, um, you know, bring up the mood and bring people together? Because the other thing is, is that there's a huge segregation between countries, you know, and they pit people against each other. And I hate that. You know, I hate like we are all human. Every single person. I don't care what country you're in. I don't care what ethnicity you are. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care about the color of your skin. I, have abs- I don't care about any of that. What I care about is the fact that, that other, there's other human beings and there's billions of us. And, you know, when we bring down those barriers, when we bring down those segregations, um, we have the opportunity to connect in a really beautiful way. So this book for me, this poetry book, is, is demonstrating that core belief that I have inside of me. And, I'm, and, and through that I'm giving um, people a platform to, to share their poetry. So it has 24 poets from all over the world. So we have Canada, we have um, Canadian Filipinos, we have uh, a blind man, we have um, people from Portugal, Mexico, America, Scotland, UK, um, you know, we have people, <clears throat> um, we have non-binary people, we, but there's pretty much every minor, minority person, um, well, minority group we have in, in this book, and I love that, and I love that. We have, and the other thing that I really love about this book is that the poets are the, the highest quality, like the fact that we have such high-quality poets and you know, like it could have been a mixed bag, honestly. When people submitted their work, it could have been like, it could have been anything. But it's been such high quality. The poet, the poetry is all diverse. It's not just one. <clears throat> it's not just one style. So, which is something else that I really love. You know, the fact that at, when when a, when a, when the reader picks this book up, it's not just going to be one style of poetry. It's not. You know, all of the limitations, all the restrictions have been completely removed. So. You're going to go on a journey not only of the world, not only of different styles, of different languages, of different poets, but you're going to go on this whole, like you're, you're going to see the world through um, the poet all over the world, you know, and I think that's beautiful. There's a unification. There's a beautiful unification of that. And so there is, um, oh, there's also a poet from Israel as well, which is awesome. And so we have, yes. I didn't want to limit it either in the sense of language. I really wanted to promote <laughs> The fact that English is not just the only language in this world, and I and I feel like there is a little an, a level of ignorance when it comes to that, and I wanted to promote all languages. So we have uh, we have I think it's Hebrew, we have uh, Spanish, we have Portu- Portuguese, we have Vietnamese, and we have English. Now some of the poems are, have been converted into English, and others um, have are just in the native tongue which I think is absolutely incredible. And a lot of people gave me a lot of flack for this. They were like, why are you not doing everything in English? And I was just like, because English is not the only language that exists in this world. And I want to promote that. I want, I want, I think there's something beautiful about opening a poetry book and seeing a language that you don't know, that isn't familiar to you. It doesn't, it's not necessarily about you under being able to read that language, but it's, um, you know, there's something beautiful in how, the written word in different languages is printed on on a page, and there's something really beautiful about that. Like, yeah, so so that's how the book came around, and that's essentially you know the the highlight of what makes this book so special. Definitely special because the world in our words is contributed by people all over the world. So, Mrs. Steph, before we go on, I'm inviting you to listen to my other podcast, Food 101, our fourth season, people, fourth season with Chef Alessandro, one of the best executive chef in one of five star restaurants in downtown Toronto. Plus, do Listen to our latest episode. We talk about food101.ca or www.food101.ca. This is the website or official website of Food 101. Because if you will visit this website, you're going to learn how to cook or to make your food delicious. Whatever you are or whatever you are, a beginner's or a professional cook. So please do. Uh, Bishop, I wish I was w- over w- there. Food. That looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do visit Mrs. Steph and start cooking. <laughs> and plus one more, I'm 
promoting my, of course, Mrs. Steph, I'm promoting my audiobook, people. Audiobook. I have already six audiobooks, and most of them are bestsellers. Book 101 Review, Volume 3. I did suggestions. Earth Fever, my climate change book. Please do support it. It's for our generation to generation to come. The Unraveling Climate and Our Race to Restore Balance. And of course, my book 101 Review, Volume 2 Selected. It's all a compilation of my book 101 Review. And book 101 Review, Volume 1, highly recommended. Plus 2, my two self-help books. Threads of existence, weaving the tapestry of life, and life is too short, a journey of discovery, fulfillment, and joy. So please do download and have a copy of my bestsellers audiobook. So, Miss Steph, let's promote yes. our latest poetry book. How did you overcome writer's block when you're crafting a poem? Yeah, so poetry is a very different form, honestly, when it comes to writer's block because um, it's not necessarily about the story. It's about, like, how you demonstrate lines um, and, and capture people, and there's lots of different styles. So for me, um, I I honestly just have, like, moments of um, huge inspiration, and it's, it's, it's like, oh, my God, I have to, I have to, like, words will just kind of drop in and I'll have to write those words down. And so I, when that happens, I always write it, right? And, and, and I'll, I'll leave it in my notes in my phone or in my notebook and then I'll go back um, and I'll rework it. And so I've done that a few times now and it can be hard because, like, when you first have that inspiration, you write it, you're like, this is amazing. And, again, like my, my fiercely me, like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I've done the best poem, poem ever. And then you get there and you're like, oh, my God, this needs work. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you're like, this oh, my God, this is working. And so you have to kind of be really critical with yourself and you have to be honest with yourself and and you have to go back and you have to revisit it. And so. You know, it's interesting because, like, there is a part where I absolutely love poetry, but then I also get really scared whether or not it's 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 a good poem or not. Um, and yeah, it's 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 hard. It's very 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 hard to be honest because your poetry is not like really about chapters and things. It's about <clears throat> how you're going to demonstrate an impact. That's a big thing, like how you're going to impact the reader through your words. Um, and so I want, I'd like to share a poem with you if I could. Um, oh, yes. Please yeah, do. Yeah, if I could, that would be awesome. And it is such a beautiful – it's it's called Delphi. Mm. Um, and Delphi – so we went to Greece and we were in – we were up in a place called Delphi, which is where um, the, the, they call it the centre of the universe, right? They call it the centre of the universe. And it was just so, like it was such a spiritual place, like you could just feel the energy. So, and this, and look, I, and, the, and I want to use this one because this is one where I wrote it and then I reread it and I was like, this is terrible. And then I had to go back and rewrite it. And so you have to kind of be really critical, but you also have to kind of understand what message you want. So this is called Delphi. I close my eyes and I breathe in. A direct connection to the world we cannot see. Can be felt. Your presence still lingers in the air. You were here. As if the magic is falling all around us. The smell of pine laced with ancestors' souls. We are in the centre of the universe. A witness to the creation of life. A light touches the world as if it was made only for my eyes. I feel the earth's heartbeat, the heart bubble, the heat bubbles inside of me, the hard rock surface, an attempt of deterrent, a visual force for the mind. The water laps at the edges of the universe, all encompassing, attempting to cool our souls while the heat still generates inside us. Turmoil between the worlds. The implosion of us can be seen from afar. 
As we try to destroy by collapsing, the centre of the universe is straight down. You just need to look. I watch on as if the ending of the world would be different. The seasons come and go while life flashes. Life is passed on and continues the survival. Unsure what the survival is for. So, yeah, wow. so that's called Delphi. What? <laughs> and that was one which was really hard. Beautiful. Thank you. Yes, very, very, very beautiful and amazing poetry. And, Miss Steph, what is the best highlight of the world in our words? Yeah, so I think that the best highlight has been um, working with so many incredible poets. There is, like, just to be, to create such a beautiful community um, where everyone's participating and, you know, they're wanting to engage and they're wanting to talk and it's like this mini community um, has been such a wonderful experience. Like it's been also very, you know, there's been moments of very, um, of, of difference and, 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 you know, having to be mature and having hard conversation, but there's also been many, many beautiful moments of interaction and, um, you know, sharing what what's going on for us all over the world and, you know, realising that we're all human and, you know, so I think that's been one of the most beautiful things. And then, you know, seeing everybody's beautiful poems, like, oh, my God, like, I just, I just, it has been so amazing to just, to read so many amazing poems um, from so many amazing poets. Like, just, it's so cool. Um, this project is honestly awesome. So that's one of, and there's a couple of really cool ones. Yes, and congratulations for the new poetry book. So, Mrs. Steph, can you please invite our listeners to support your upcoming poetry book? Yeah, I'd love to. So, we have uh, created a poetry page. So, you can go um, the, the poetry page, The World in Our Words, on Facebook. You can go and follow me um mrs Rowe author on instagram and also facebook um and i'm also on tiktok which is mrs Rowe author or stephanie Rowe. um but if you wanted to go and pre-order or or buy a book um you can head to www.mrsrowe.org o-r-g um which is the website which is currently being shared at the moment and you head there, go to the store, you can pre-order the poetry book or alternatively you can buy my book, Fiercely Me. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. And then uh, we've, also got another, we've also got another website which you can head to, which is um, the world in our words, um, I think it's .com, which has, a, you can also pre-order through that. But that's specifically been set up just for the poetry book. Yes, people, let's support Mrs. Stephanie Rowe because if you support her, more and more poetry or books to come. 100%. What is your advice for those struggling, struggling writers out there? Um, I think having faith in your story and in yourself is a really huge thing. So... You're going to have knockbacks. You're going to have people tell you that you can't do something, that it's too hard, no one's going to buy your book. You're going to have a lot of negativity. You are going to come up against a huge wave of negativity. Um, and, and so when you do have that wave, having that self-assurance and that self-belief um, is a huge thing. And, it's, and it, you know, it's gotten me through many, many, many months Um of, of hardship really when, when it comes to, to writing and, and releasing um, your work. So I think the first thing is to just believe that you are worthy, that your story is worthy, that you deserve to actually share your story no matter what anybody says and no matter what anybody thinks. You deserve to, to share what you have on the inside through word with, to the outside world. You know, just like this podcast, people, you know, people deserve to have to share this. They deserve to have a connection with other human beings. And you, you, I do it through word and you, you obviously do it through word, but you also do it through this podcast, right? And, and so it's, it's a really beautiful form. So that's, that's the first thing that I would say. The second thing is, is that build your community, like go and reach out to different Facebook groups, find your people 
um, have that solid friend or, you know, cousin or auntie that believes in you, believes in your work. And, and have them because there's going to be moments where you're going to just be on the floor crying and you just need a friend to pick you up and be like, you, this is, you know, you're okay, you're going to get through this. Um, and, you know, I, I use a lot of resources through Facebook groups. Um, and so, you know, the Facebook groups for writers are really, really helpful. Um, they are a great resource. They've been like a lot of authors have tried a lot of stuff, so they're willing to share and help other authors avoid the hardship. So um, I think that's also something that you can do. And I think also like writing every day and I have this conversation with my husband who is, um, he's he writes scripts. And I said, Jace, it's not about the quality of the writing necessarily. It's about writing every day, you know, it, or every second day or having that schedule of writing. It's about writing anything. It can be, an, it can be absolutely terrible. It doesn't matter because guess what can happen? You can go back and use one sentence out of that, you know, page or that, that a couple of paragraphs out of the few pages that you've written and you build on that, right? And you go back when you're in the heightened state of, of expression and artistic expression and you go back and you rework that, and you re-edit that. And so you might, you might need that kind of paragraph and the rest of it's crap, but that one or two paragraphs is amazing. And you need that as like the foundation of the next chapter or you need that to, you know, to, to continue on the, on the journey of, of your writing journey. And so it's not necessarily about writing amazing every single day. It just doesn't happen. But there are pearls of wisdom in every page that we do write. And so it's about understanding that concept and, and not having really high expectations going, I'm going to have a crappy day of writing and that's okay. You know, sometimes it's just about expressing whatever you need to express on that day and then coming back and working on that. And, and you know, and I, and I see it as a foundation. It's like you've got to have a foundation to work upwards and if you don't have anything. So if you don't write every day or you don't write every second day or you don't have a schedule of writing, then you're not going to have anything that you can possibly work with. And so that's, I think, the shift that I find with a lot of people in my life is that, you know, it's, it's shifting from going, I need to write every day and it has to be amazing every single day to going, no, it doesn't have to be amazing. Just write and then you'll get your pearls of wisdom that you can then work on. Very well said, Mrs. Staff. And you stop procrastinating. Go, go, go. Who knows you are the making or the best in the making, like Miss Stephanie Rowe. So, Mrs. Staff, thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Daniel, for having me. It's so lovely to see you again and so much love. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. And, and Morticon people, see you soon. Thanks, guys to hear from you all it's going to be awesome to hear from everybody around the globe this is an awesome awesome podcast thank you book 101 yes Thank you so much too. And according to my uh, analytics, I got 145 countries listening to this podcast, Mrs. Staff. So we are empower writers. <laughs> this podcast is empowering writers all over the world. And you are most welcome. Welcome to come back. Let's talk about books that you read. And in that way, we promote your two books.